In this video, we're going to make a nice simple scanner effect using the visual effect graph. We're going to take an image and convert it into a million particles and then scatter them. Let's begin! Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and this channel is all about helping you learn how to make your own games with in-depth tutorials made by a professional indie game developer. So if you find the video helpful, consider subscribing. Okay, so what we're going to make here is a very simple but very interesting effect using the visual effect graph. Now if you're not familiar with it, then first go check out the Getting Started video. Right now here I have my simple logo, so just a normal image, and now I press a key. And yep, there it goes, the logo gets converted into a million particles and the particles all scatter away. Now this effect works with any texture. So here it is with a different texture and I press space and yep, there you go, it works exactly the same. So the image gets converted into a million particles and they all scatter away in a very nice satisfying way. So this is a very good looking effect that you can easily apply to your own games when you show your studio's logo. This video's Patreon sponsor is Bad Adventure. Bad Adventure is a game development duo currently working on their first game, Wayfarer's Edge. It's a RPG focused on exploring and settling unknown frontier lands in a low fantasy and wild west theme. Check them out at badadventure.com. Thank you to the Patreon sponsor and thank you to these awesome supporters for making this video possible. Go to patreon.com slash unitycodemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. Alright, so this is our goal, let's get to it! Okay, so here we are in an empty scene. So let's begin by going to our project files and create a new visual effect and a new visual effect graph. Let's call this our scatter effect and just drag it onto our scene. Yep, there's the default effect. Now let's double click to open up the visual effect graph and just drag it in there. All right, here it is. Now in order to make this effect, there's pretty much just one thing that we're going to need. We're going to need to create a point cache from one of our textures. So first of all, what is exactly a point cache? Now a point cache is a simple way of storing a bunch of data for each point. So in this case, we're going to store the position and the color of each pixel. Now to create our point cache, we already have a tool that's included that we can use. So go into window and then down here onto visual effects, onto utilities, and we have the point cache bake tool. So here this works also with meshes, but in this case, we're going to use a texture and let me drag the code monkey head texture. And now also make sure to take this one to export the colors. And that's pretty much it, so just save. And now here you might see this error message. So it's saying that the texture is not readable. So if that happens, just select the texture, go into the inspector to visualize the import settings. And in here, make sure you take the read write enable. So just take this, hit save, and now we can indeed save our point cache. And yep, there it is here in our project files, we can see our point cache storing the point data for our logo texture. So this is what we're going to use for our particles. So back in our VFX graph, in here, let's first grab our point cache. So on an empty space in here, let's just press space. And now let's search for point cache and yep, there you go. And in here, just drag our point cache right in there. And yep, there you go. It automatically loads with the data that we saved. So we have the point count, which is the total number of points in the point cache. We have the position, which is the position of each point, and the color, which is the color of each point. So let's begin by setting our position. So here on the initialize, let's get rid of the velocity, and let's set a static lifetime. So in here, press space. First of all, for the set lifetime, so it's set to a fixed value. And now we're going to add a block, and now let's search for position from map. And yep, there it is, set position from map. Then we also have a color from map, set color from map, yep. And now we just need to connect these. So connect the position onto that attribute map and the color with that one. So in there we can see our particles spawning at different positions. In our position, we can modify the scale in order to get the object to be bigger. So just like this, now they're spawning more all over the place. Now for the color, we need to apply the color onto a normal white texture. So let's go down here and we're going to replace the default particle. Instead, let's select the default particle system particle. Then let's modify the set size over life. Instead of the particles increasing in size, let's make them decrease. So they start at a certain size and then go down, okay. And finally, on the set color over life, instead of changing the color and the alpha, let's only modify the alpha. And here in the gradient, let's start off at full alpha and then after a while it goes down to zero. All right, now if we go up here and we massively increase our capacity and our spawn rate, 
Just like that, yep, we can already see the logo being created. So you can see how each particle takes on a position and a color from the point cache. Now we can actually visualize how the point cache is working. So in here, instead of random constant per particle, let's choose sequential and do the same thing in here for the color. And yep, there you go. Now you can see how the logo is being pretty much printed line by line. So that's how all of the data is stored inside of the point cache. So if we increase this, then we have a very interesting effect. Yep, there it is. Look at that interesting effect. All right. But this is not exactly what we want. We want all of our particles to be spawned only once. So instead of a constant spawn rate, let's disable this one and we're going to press space and we're going to add a burst. Let's go with a single burst. So this will spawn this many particles as soon as the delay is over. So if it's zero, it's right as soon as the effect starts. And now in here for the count, which is the amount of particles, we can use exactly the same number as the number of points that we have in our point cache. So just like that, yep, you saw that they all spawn exactly at the start. So as soon as the effect activates, it will spawn all of the particles at once, and after they are in lifetime, then they simply vanish. So that's exactly what we want, but in here, if we put just a single burst, then we constantly have to go back into the scene in order to select it and do play again in order to reset the effect. So just for testing, we can also add a periodic burst. And here we do the same thing, so connect the same point count and set a delay for two seconds. So every two seconds, this will refresh. This way we can easily continue working on our effect, and in the end we just need to disable it and leave the single burst. Alright, so now that the particles are all being spawned in the correct position with the right color, now we just need to make them vanish. So right now they are simply reducing in size and lowering the alpha. So this is not really a very interesting effect, it looks exactly the same as the normal texture. So on our update down here, we're going to add a simple block, so let's press space, another block, let's write force. And in here we have two main options. We can add some turbulence or a vector field force. Let's start off with the turbulence. And yep, just like that, you can already see the effect in action. So everything moves around very randomly. Now let's play around these values. All right, so just like this, it already looks quite interesting. So the particles spawn and they scatter away. So it looks good, but it's a bit too random. Now let's try out applying the second method. So let's disable this one and let's apply, let's search for force and select the vector field force. Now the VFX ref already has a vector field with a bunch of randomness. Now a vector field is essentially just a 3D cube made up of voxels and each of them has a certain vector. I covered vector fields in more detail in the video where we did a deep dive on the effect covering the Unity logo. So if you want to learn more, then look at that one. But essentially, it's just a 3D field with a vector on each position. So using that, we can get a bit more of an interesting look. All right, so here I played around with a bit with the fields. Now for the vector field, I actually used the one included in the official samples. So I find that this one has a bit less randomness, which looks a bit better. Then just playing around with the size, the position, the intensity, drag, and so on. And yep, here is the final effect. So it's a bit less random and a bit more flowy, which I think looks better. And if you want, you can use both effects at once. So just click this. And yep, there you go, how the particles all scatter in different directions with a bit of flow and a bit of randomness. So since this is based on a vector field, you could also create your own to get the exact flow shape you like. So this one is going pretty random since we're using a random vector field, but we can make something with a specific wave like moving upwards, moving down, and so on. All right, so just like this, pretty much we have our effect working. Now all we need to do is just link this up with an image. So for that, let's just drag the texture onto our scene. And now to make sure that the size is exactly correct, let's disable these updates. All right, so here just playing around with the scale in order to make sure that they both have the exact same size. So here we can see the image slightly transparent with the particle spawn right on top. Now to get the effect that we want, all we need is for the image to hide itself just as soon as the particles get spawned. So for handling that animation, we can use a simple timeline. So let's create the game object for our timeline. So let's go into window, then into sequencing, and here we open the timeline window. 
So now in here, just hit on create. Now let's drag the sprite to animate it. So let's start recording, then select the sprite and set the alpha to full alpha. Then let's go after a bit and set the alpha down to zero. So just like that, the alpha starts off high and becomes low, just like that. And then we drag our scatter effect and let's make it a visual effect activation track. And in here, let's add a visual effect activation clip. So the clip activates as soon as we enter this one. And now we can go back into our scatter effect and down here disable the periodic. So we only leave the single burst. And now in here, we just have to match up these two. All right, so just like that. So we lower the alpha on our image and we activate our actual effect. So that's pretty much it. Now over here in the project files, I have this simple script. All it does is it listens to the spacebar and when so, then we start playing our timeline. So just add the script onto it. All right, so here it is. Start off with the normal image. Now press space and yep, there goes our nice logo. So the logo gets converted into a million particles and they all scatter away. So here is the complete effect. And as you saw, this is all based on creating a simple point cache, so you can make this work with any texture. All right, so here it is with a different logo. Again, just press space, and yep, there you go, everything gets converted into particles, and they all flow away. It all works based on a simple point cache, so you can create that from any texture or any mesh. And the scatter is also based on a vector field, which again, you can also make a custom one to get the exact flow that you want. So for example, this is a great, very simple effect that you can add when a game starts and your logo shows up. This video is made possible thanks to these awesome supporters. Go to patreon.com slash unitycodemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. Subscribe to the channel for more Unity tutorials, post any questions in the comments, and I'll see you next time.